thanks everyone for joining. Looks like we got a good amount of people here. Um, so just to get started, what we're going to be covering today is the presentation so easy a fourth grader can do it using X design for elementary age students. And what this is, this is a uh, kind of a spinoff of a presentation I did at SolidWorks World talking about a summer camp that I do every year working with fourth and fifth grade students using um, CAD and 3D printing. And last summer we used X-Design as our CAD tool. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and um, how we used X-Design, how we used uh, the 3D experience platform. So, and how that made actually a really great teaching tool for elementary age students, specifically uh, later elementary. So like I said, fourth, fifth graders. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna discover ways that we can keep the students engaged because we know that uh, we need to consider attention spans and stuff when we're working with kind of just sitting on a computer all day, learn the benefits of using X design as a teaching tool, how it really worked out well for students of this age level. And then we're going to look at some of the live demos of some of their student projects. I'll do one of the assignments that they do live up here, and then I'll show off some of the other ones. To get started, like I said, my name's Heather Dahl Rose. I'm a senior support engineer here at CATI and just a little, um, background of how I kind of got into all of this educational stuff. When I was in high school and middle school, I worked with the first robotics league. If any of you guys have done anything in the education field, I'm sure you've heard of that. So that's where I first got introduced to SOLIDWORKS and we actually, as part of our league, mentored the Lego league. So we worked with the elementary age kids there as part of our high school uh, robotics club there. Then when I went on to high school, I was outreach coordinator and president of a club um, re responsible for a NASA competition and a part of that competition was doing uh, community and especially like elementary outreach. Here's an outreach event we had where we took a rocket to a local elementary school and we uh, had the kids paint a rocket. And then later on in college, I actually started working with the summer camp and I worked as a field officer for the summer camp, kind of just floating around helping with the different camps. Uh, this was a really cool physics camps that we got to participate in. And after college, I went to work with a uh, VAR called Prism Engineering that was eventually acquired by a VAR called Fisher Unitech, where I started my summer camp. And then we are acquired by CATI. And we've continued to work with that summer camp. And I kind of run a week long camp where we talk about things like CAD, physics, and 3D printing. There are three sections of this camp and I'm responsible for the CAD portion. And so we're going to talk about that throughout uh, this presentation. So, Like I said, some key takeaways we're going to look at. We're going to discover methods to keep the students engaged. So how can we uh, keep the students engaged? How can we make CAD really fun for uh, fourth and fifth grade students? Uh, what can X-Design do for us in terms of uh, designing and working with kids of this age? Is it too complex of a CAD product? How do we take what's a pretty complex CAD product and get it down to that level and then look at some live demos and see what we've actually been designing in uh, 3D experience with these students? So the first topic is going to be keeping students engaged. And so I was working with fourth and fifth graders, and what we notice is they have about a 45 minute attention span we have there until we really uh, end up having kids running around the classroom. So we wanted to keep them engaged, wanted to keep them having fun. This was a summer camp. It wasn't in a classroom type situation where you can kind of maybe structure it a little bit more. These kids are, these kids and their parents are paying to be here and they're paying to like have fun as part of this summer camp. So we wanted to keep them engaged. We want to make sure that it's the most enjoyable experience ever. Hopefully it's the most enjoyable experience if you convert this over to a classroom type endeavor as well. So we had like a 45 minute attention span and what we tried to do when we were doing that is we had three main things that we tried to integrate when we were working with these students. The first one being hands-on activities. And rather than me explaining it, what I'll actually do is I have a quick video and I'll let some of the kids explain kind of one of our activities here. And I don't know if the sound will play, so we will. If it doesn't, there's audio there. But what they're doing here is they're making a bumper for their uh, for their car that we eventually made as part of the summer camp. They're explaining what they've done here. 
and we eventually actually made these bumpers in CAD. So the first part of the lesson was for them to create something in real life. And then we took it even further and they designed little bumpers in CAD. And you guys are going to see some of the bumper designs as we go through and into the actual students' projects. But one of the really good ways to keep them engaged and keep uh, student engagement there is to do a mixture of let's do a real life activity and let's um, then take that and see how we can use it in CAD. And that really goes into the next step, which is knowledge connection. So getting ways that these students can know things that they already know about. This camp was integrated with the physics department as well. So we did have the opportunity to use some physics concepts here. And here's a, another little video we have here. Of, that's not playing. Let's put it over here. So where they're working with um, drag, like aerodynamic drag, and we had them first run around, look at their car, see how they work without the hood, and then we had them run around with parachutes, and what we basically did is a big uh, relay race where they went back and forth and saw that when they had drag on their, on their with their parachutes, they were a lot slower, and then we talked about some different ways that really aerodynamics come into play when building a race car and that's really the main purpose of the camp. So they got to do that activity and then they went and designed it in CAD knowing what they knew after completing that race. And then finally some exciting demos and for this camp we had the benefit we are working at Penn State, we are working at their campus so we had a lot of labs and things they could go and tour, see cool ways people are using CAD in 3D printing. Uh, we had someone 3D printing with clay, we had a few um, different clubs that are using 3D printing that are really cool within the university, but just showing some really cool demos on how what they're doing, it's not just kind of like an academic endeavor, but really how it's being used in real life seemed to really interest them, and it got them up and walking and going around, so we found that really useful when integrating this CAD program, so they're not just sitting at a computer all day, but they're saying, okay, I'm designing this in CAD, but what does that actually mean and how does this actually play into me working with this in real life? The next topic I wanted to cover was the benefits of using X Design, and right here we have a picture of one of the students working in X Design. He has this 3D printed wheel that he's going through and designing in X Design, and you can see them measuring out the wheel and using that in order to recreate that on their machines. So I'm actually going to pull up the 3D Experience platform real quick, and I want to talk about some of the real benefits of working in the 3D Experience platform. So one of the uh, actual things we've always had trouble with in summer camps when we give kids computers is that if we have them go to different sites and stuff, there's a really good chance of them getting sidetracked going off on different kind of tangents there. A real benefit of X-Design is that everything can be really encapsulated just within the 3D Experience platform. So for example, this is a 3D Experience platform, if none of you guys have seen it before, and what you can build is different tabs for different dashboards and things like that. What we've done is we've full screened this, we made a, uh, we just brought this up, full screened it, took away the ability to use the address bar, and everything that they would need in order to complete this camp is right here within the 3D Experience platform. So they don't need to go anywhere else. They don't need to go on any other websites. Everything's right here from the X Design platform that we're going to use to create the wheel a little bit later on in the presentation. So they would design right here. If they need, uh, we also worked with apps for kids just a little bit in. If you guys have done anything in the educational field with SolidWorks, you'll know that's a really common uh, platform that we use. So we had apps for kids just loaded up right in a web page browser right here. We had a notepad that they could take notes for so different ideas for their cars, all the different team names, um, a calculator here because like we saw in the PowerPoint, they were measuring and they were taking um, some measurements of the car and sometimes that required just simple addition and stuff, which most of the time they did in their head, but sometimes they wanted a calculator for. So that was right there for them. And then save so they could save all their projects. They could see their um, other students projects right here they could see their team's projects when they're all working on the car and they could see all of their projects and really pull them up really easy so they didn't need to go anywhere else we didn't even have to go into windows explorer and have them searching around and have the risk of them 
uh, losing files or anything like that. Everything was really condensed into this 3D experience platform so that we could just sit on this web page, go through these tabs, and really focus on what was going on here. Another thing that was great about X-Design, uh, one of the limitations of SOLIDWORKS is that it can only um, be installed on like pretty powerful Windows uh, laptops. They have to be able to sustain um, the SOLIDWORKS software. Since X-Design is a web-based platform, these kids actually used uh, just Surface tablets, like pretty inexpensive Surface tablets. They were able to carry them around so they could take them outside after the uh, parachute races and continue working as long as they have Wi-Fi out there. And they could uh, take them wherever they needed if they're working on their designs while in class. They could really just, they're really portable. X-Design does have the ability to integrate with a touch screen, which is really nice because most of these kids are already really used to working on tablets. Uh, for a lot of stuff that they do in their everyday lives. So being able to go on a Surface tablet and sometimes using a mouse, but a lot of times using some touch screen aspects there made it really easy for them to pick up and integrate. Uh, it wasn't learning everything on mouse and keyboard. They could kind of take some skills that they've learned just from playing video games and integrate them into designing in 3D CAD, which is really easy to teach there. Um, and then another nice thing about uh, 3D experience is the ability that we can create roles. So in this 3D experience platform, if I look at the different roles that I have, we have different roles that we can give people. We can give them 3D creator, collaborator, I, collaborative, innovator, and we can give students different roles. And what this really means is we can prevent students from overwriting other people's work. I can prevent them from maybe adding new GUIs to their dashboard or prevent them from using some of the other apps that maybe I didn't want them running in their dashboard and really restrict it down there while still giving them the ability to have access to all of this, to have access to other students' work, to have access to their student work without having the worry of them overwriting it. And because it's all online, I don't have to, we didn't have to go and do any of the hunt and find of, ooh, where did you save that? I know you saved it somewhere, but you lost it somewhere in Windows. Everything was right here within the 3D experience platform for them to use. Um, and with all of these dashboard modules, it was really uh, great. They didn't kind of get as sidetracked as we would before, and we were able to work directly within the software right here. Okay. So just kind of some takeaways on that. Just simple dashboards with the necessary components. So we really simplified the dashboards down, gave them exactly what they needed in order to complete the tasks they need to be completed. We set up student roles so that the students couldn't overwrite what each other were doing, but could still see and collaborate and work with each other. And then we integrated a hands-on tool like 3D printing. And this was great working here because our 3D printing guy could just go in, go into 3D Drive, pull these as STLs, and just go ahead and automatically print them so he can pull them and sit, download as an STL and pull all the student products and go and print them so that they could get their 3D products printed without us having to do a lot of, okay, let me send you the file or anything like that. Everything was just integrated within this one platform. All right, and the last part I wanna cover is just some project demos. So the students had five days of camp and four days of CAD learning as the fifth day was kind of assembling their car, putting everything together, doing a little bit of decorating on their car. And the last part of the fifth day was them actually teaching their parents. So here's a group who chose to teach CAD. They all got to pick a topic that they wanted to teach the parents at the ending of the camp ceremony. Uh, this group wanted to teach them the CAD platform. Um, so here's some kids just showing them how to make things in the, the experience platform. You can see uh, one of them operating the screen right here, a few of them talking. Uh, just going through that right there. So by the end of this camp, and this was four days of CAD instruction, they were actually kind of demonstrating how to do CAD up on a big screen in, bun in, front of a in front of a bunch of people, which was a really cool thing to see. And here's just an example of that first lesson I was talking about, creating the wheel. So they create this wheel in CAD using different shapes, and we really talk about how different how everything can be a combination of different shapes. So this one big wheel piece is a combination of a big circle, a smaller circle, and then these rectangles. And that's how we can get all of this to add together. So they started out with the rectangle, or they started out with the paper, paper shapes. They measured them out. They figured out how that integrated into their wheel. And then they went and built that in CAD. So they're able to kind of see how 
things in like a Boolean sense go from being on 2D paper, on 2D sketches, to the 3D wheel that they printed and had put out on their car. So we actually had four days of CAD lessons. The first day was creating a license plate, and I'll just go over. So this is a really quick example of one of the license plates I obviously did mine right here. But if I go to the 3D Play app, I can actually see an example of what that license plate looks like. It's just loading here in the 3D Experience app. So here's an example of what the license plate would look like. We'd have them put their name, and then they actually had some saved symbols of their state. Most of them had Pennsylvania. We had a few who were from different states, but they put it right here and we print it off. And this was their first kind of intro into CAD, just creating a rectangle here, putting a shape that we've already pre-made for them here, and then typing out some sketch text right here. So a really simple, easy to create CAD product where they just kind of get introduced to the CAD software and how to work within that there. The next day's lesson was designing the wheels, and this is actually the one I want to do live up here for you, and that's the one that you saw them doing live on the screen. And it was really cool because they'd make a new product. I'll name it Wheel 2 because I think I've already made a wheel before. And this is what the CAD platform looks like. This is what they would see every time they log on to their CAD software. And it really looks kind of similar to SolidWorks in that you just click on a plane, and like we saw, they'd already measured out each circle so they knew how big they wanted each circle to be. So the first big circle right here was three inches. So I go there and I want to create a circle and I want to make it three inches. And I know that it's a quarter of an inch tall. So I just use my extrude to make it a quarter of an inch tall. And this was the first part of their wheel. And now they know that they need to cut out those rectangles in the smaller circle. So they clicked on the face again and drew some center rectangles. And gave those dimensions and they measured that those were to five inches in length. And then there was the smaller circle that was 2.5 inches. And yeah, there's some different ways that we could have designed this. We know as designers that we could have made this and it would have been uh, a lot less throwaway geometry, but this is a really good way to show how we can think about geometry in simple shapes like squares, rectangles, circles, ovals, things like that. So we don't have to do complex like arches and angles and things like that. We can just break it down into really the basic simple shapes. And so then they knew this was subtracted out. This wasn't added in and we'd actually 3D printed out the parts. So you can see the parts here and we 3D printed out the shapes where they could actually put pop out these shapes here and see how they pop out of the wheel. And so they went in one little thing different here. Um, bosses and extrudes are all under the same tab here. So it's kind of like two sides of the same coin. You're either making it positive to make a solid or negative to make an extrusion. They picked the circles to get cut out. have that there. And then the final thing was that circle up at the top. And for this circle, they actually want to create it with a draft. And we talked about what a draft was and how things can come up at an angle, like we see here, see this little middle hub is drafted up and how we measure that. So they actually got to practice using protractors and things like that and different methods that they could use to measure an angle when they're measuring out a part. So this was a 0.25 extrude, went into our advanced options and just added a 45 degree draft. We made it a very simple draft to create just because we didn't want any weird numbers there. And there they have 
chart that they created. And so we were able to save this and then they were able to print it and they were able to print that and get these 3D printed wheels that they actually ended up putting on their cars. The next was the bumper design and you guys saw some of the kids talking about that early. You saw them making the tin foil and um, cotton ball versions of their bumpers and then they went in and actually designed their own bumpers from that. So if I go back over here, here's an example of a student bumper that they actually created. You can once again look at it in the 3D play. So here's a bumper that they created. They basically made really thin CAD geometry here that would kind of act like a spring to absorb some of the energy. They made this right here. You can tell it's a student design because it's not really that centered on the part. It's a little off center, but it did work and it prevented their part, their car from running into any walls and maybe breaking any components. And that was really the point of this lesson. They all started off with just this block, so this back block was standard and everybody so it could clip to their car and then they all created the different types of bumper design that they wanted to do at the front. So this part right here was a thing that differentiated between each student and then they started off with just this main block so that it would fit on their car. And then finally they created a hood. So they we talked about how flow works and how drag works on a car. Here's them kind of drawing some flow lines on things they could think about. So this kid's working on a football and designing how the air might flow over his football. And then they created these different shapes in X design. And this is where the 3D or the um, touch screen really came in handy. And these in them draw, drawing these more organic shapes um, and splines to create their different parts. And then, you know, they decorated them with uh, different windows and things like that to make them unique to themselves using a 3D print pen, but they were able to create these really aerodynamic things and they submitted these kind of before lunch and then I dropped them into just a really simple uh, flow simulation and showed them how the air designs actually looked over their parts. So they got to see that in real life, some actual engineering concepts that we might design. And so that was the majority of the presentation there. So we talked about how we can keep students engaged, how we can keep them interested in the CAD program, maybe not get them going off on tangents, maybe keeping them in that 45 minute um, attention span where they're really having fun and really learning without getting bored by sitting on the computer the whole time. The benefits of X-Design being an all encapsulated platform and that 3D experience platform so that we didn't have to have kids going off to different internet sites or anything like that. Everything was really well contained and we were able to kind of keep on track and we were able to have a lot of different modules but all in one spot and all kind of just ready to pull and work from. And then we explored some of the live demos. I did the wheel demo for you guys and then we looked at some of the other projects that they created uh, throughout this class. And here's one of the finished cars minus the hood. You guys saw the hoods earlier. But here's one of the finished cars that they created and you can see that wheel design that we just created a second ago. So I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation.